Heavenly Father, as we take up this study, um, we ask for your blessing upon what we're going to attempt to do here in terms of the format. Uh, we ask for the presence of your Holy Spirit and that you would accompany this study uh, with your spirit as it goes out um, to those that will um, take a look at it. We want it to be effective for the purpose that you have designed for it. Please take control of um, the words that Odilia and I will share. And uh, we thank you for these things in Jesus' name. Amen. We're a little bit under the gun here in terms of how long Stephen and Odilio can be here. Um, so we're going to change the format of Odilio's presentation where I'm going to be involved. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to put some things on the board, make some comments, and then ask for his input about it. Um, and from the floor, Stephen has a mic also where he can add his contributions as we go on, as we go forward. Before we get into this study, um, we're still going to be following along through the notes on July 18th, 2020. Um, but I'm hoping that we can get it moving forward a little bit quicker um, so we can get it all finalized before they have to return to Europe. But before we get into this study, Brother Daniel this morning was looking something up uh, from the time of the end magazine and he recognized something that none of us have recognized before this is this is one of the later publications i think there was actually three printings i'm going to set this mic home for a down for a second i think there there was probably three printings to the time of the end magazine this is a 1999 printing and if you know, we've identified that Parminder and Tess have turned this magazine into an icon. They don't believe what the message in it really represents. Particularly, they don't believe the threefold union of the dragon, the beast, and the false prophet. And this magazine was first published in 1996 and represents the formalization of God's message in 1996. And... Parminder and Tess will lead you to believe that the only counter-formalized message in that history was Fox News. And Fox News is bad. And therefore, when you deal with Fox News in our history, the good that you're supposed to listen to is CNN. But we discovered, um, just before September 7th, that in 1996, there was three satanic media outlets formalized. One of them was Fox News, the false prophet of Bible prophecy. The other one was CNN, the dragon of Bible prophecy. And the third one was Eternal World Television Network, the media outlet, the largest Catholic media outlet in the world. And we put that in the public record on September 7th under the title of the sermon was Hiding Mother Angelica. And if you go into the Eternal World broadcast Television Network and you look at the history of this nun that put this media outlet together, they will tell you, she will tell you, that the primary purpose of her coming into history was that she was going to travel with Pope John Paul II on all his travels around the world. And he, he, was, he traveled the world more than any other pope. Um, but this morning, uh, so what was hidden, the, the, the title of that presentation was Hiding Mother Angelica, and what had been hidden by Tess and Parminder was that the papacy had its media outlet formalized in 1996, as well as Fox News. And, of course, they kind of disregarded anything about CNN as well, because that's the, the fountain they've got their people drinking from, the, the fountain of the dragon. But we never realized that when we were speaking in this magazine about Pope John Paul II, that we took a picture to put in here as a, an illustration, and it's a picture that's advertising Eternal World Television Network, right there in the magazine that formalized the message. Mother Angelica was hidden in the Time of the End magazine. And we wanted to make sure we put that in the record. When they're not reading this magazine, all you would have to do if you were really searching is read the Time of the End, this publication, and you can't help but see... Uh, it, Eternal e EWTN International Catholic Network. And it began operation as a news outlet in 1996, the same year 
that this was first published. Thanks for that. Okay, I'm going to begin um, where Odilio was going to begin. He was still going to deal with page nine of your notes. I hope you're following along in the notes. And he was still dealing with chiasms. He had more to say about chiasms. And I'm going to, I'm going to explain a couple chiasms here in a moment that are in the notes. But first, I, I want to put in the record, if you're not aware of it, these chiastic structures that we're looking with, looking at are primarily numerical chiastic structures. That's because that's what we're dealing with now is these, these time symbols. But in the Bible, in Hebrew literature, well, in the Bible, I don't know about Hebrew literature, but in the Bible, the Bible is structured upon chiasms. And if you haven't ever uh, looked at some of the theologians' work on chiastic structures in the Bible, they're generally not numerical. They're, they're doctrinal. Okay? They're, uh, I've seen a chiastic structure of the entire book of Daniel. And what a chiastic structure is, is it begins at this step, and then it'll step up to the next level, and then to the next level, and it'll reach the high point, and then it'll take the exact number of steps downward. And when you see it in the Bible, you'll find that the first step corresponds to the last step, and the second step to the step before the last, and it, it's a perfect parallel. So what I'm saying, biblically, there are more chiasms in the Bible that are in the literature itself. There's, there's people that have demonstrated chiasms within a verse, chiasms within a chapter, and chiasms within an entire book. So I'm going to give you one uh, that Stephen was aware of, and you can see it. It's Psalm 71. And this is a, an easy illustration to, to get the principle of a chiasm. And the reason I'm taking a little bit of time on this is for those of us that aren't so familiar with chiasms, let alone the numerical chiasms, you need to know that this is part of God's signature and that he, he puts it even in the written word in the scripture. So if you're in Psalm 71, the first four verses of Psalm 71 are a, a prayer. In thee, O Lord, do I put my trust. Let me never be put to confusion. Deliver me in thy righteousness and cause me to escape, incline thine ear unto me, and save me. Be thou my strong habitation, whereunto I may continually resort. Thou hast given commandment to save me, for thou art my rock and my fortress. Deliver me, O my God, out of the hand of the wicked, out of the hand of the unrighteous and cruel man. So in the first four verses, you have a prayer for deliverance. And then if you look, I'm not going to read all the verses, but if you note, just note down the verses, you'll be able to see what I'm saying. Verses 19 through 24 are once again a prayer for deliverance. He's a, a, a praise. A praise. Okay. Um, for deliverance. Of deliverance. Okay. But prayer in the first four verses and in the one, two, three, four, last six verses, it's a praise for deliverance. But the end has been illustrated by the beginning. Then if you go to verses 5 and 6, um, of the 5 through 7, it says, for, for thou art my hope, O Lord God, thou art my trust from the, my youth. By thee have I been holpen, holden up from the womb. Thou art he that took me out of my mother's bowels. My praise shall be continually of thee. I am as a wonder unto many, but thou art my strong refuge. Verses 5 through 7 is identifying the same theme that you will find in verses 17 and 18, which is the step before the last step. And verses 5 through 7 is the step after the first step, because it's, it's a step, 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 step to the top, and then the identical steps down backwards. So 5 through 7, speaking about the refuge, um, goes to connects with verses 17 and 18. Oh, thou hast taught me from my youth, and hitherto have I declared thy wondrous works. Now also when I am old and gray-headed, O oh God, forsake me not, until I have showed thy strength unto this generation, thy power to everyone that is to come. So verse 8 is the third step. It says, Let my mouth be filled with thy praise, 
And it corresponds to verses 15 and 16. My mouth shall show forth thy righteousness and thy salvation all day, for I know not the numbers thereof. And verses 9 and 10, Cast me not off in the time of old age. Forsake me not when my strength faileth, for my enemies speak against me. Verses 9 and 10, it corresponds to verse 13 and 14. Let them be confounded and consumed that are adversaries to my souls. So, so you, if you read it and you're writing these verses down, you'll see the same a connecting thought in each of these stair steps and the center of this chiasm, the highest step upward, is verse 12. And verse 12 is divided into part A and part B. O God, be not far from me. O my God, make haste for my help. That's, that's the center part, a cry to, to God. That's the, the highest rung on the ladder. And then it's going to go backwards down through those same rungs. That's a chiasm. And you find it, if you know how to, do, to recognize it, you find it throughout the scriptures. So, chiasms be, become part of the testimony to support these patterns that we're dealing with. And I'll show you one up here, and then once I show it to you, um, Brother Adelio can, can add anything he wants to, and so can Stephen or anyone from the audience here. Uh, but this is Ezra 7.9. And Ezra leads, leaves Babylon on the first day of the first month. He gets to Jerusalem on the first day of the fifth month. And this is here is the center of the chiasm, the tenth day of the seventh month. And you're really not going to be able to nail down the tenth day of the seventh month in the book of Ezra, but you know it from Millerite history, that because they understood this, it allowed them to recognize the tenth day of the seventh month. But then if you go out to the 20th day of the ninth month, you're going to see the point in time when national sovereignty is being enforced. What do I mean by national sovereignty? Sister White tells us that it required all three decrees to fulfill the prophecy to rebuild and restore Jerusalem. And it's in this third decree where they're given, Artaxerxes gives them the authority to punish not only civil crime, if someone steals something, but religious crime, if someone blasphemes. And you can see that in the third decree. And here at this point, um, in, and I didn't put the Bible references up here, I'm sorry. At this point here, at this way, Mark, in Ezra 10, 9, I believe. Yeah. Yes. Correct. Um, you'll see this is where the, the heathen wives are being separated. They're, they're implementing religious law here. So... In order for their sovereignty to be legitimately returned to them, they have to be able to enforce religious and civil law. And here, on the 20th day of the ninth month, is the illustration of them implementing their national sovereignty. And here there is much rain. Uh, okay, so that, that would add to it if you were going to look at the, what these waymarks are really speaking about. But what I want you to see is from the first day of the fifth month, to the 20th day of the ninth month, that the center of the chiasm here is the 10th day of the seventh month, and that you have 70 days here and 70 days here. This is a chiasm that is in the history of Ezra. And of course, the history of, history of Ezra is the history of the Millerite movement, is the history of our movement, and these time patterns that are in all of these histories are speaking to us today. This is... This is the, the, great, the first disappointment in 1844. Um, when we deal with Samuel Snow, we start his letters over here. And if you remember, um, this here, if we were looking at the, the line of Samuel Snow, April 19th is the center of a chiasm of 63 days and then 63 days. But we're not looking at that chiasm now in Millerite history. We're looking at the chiasm that begins on the first day of the first month then goes to midnight. I have July 27th. 21st, yes. My bad. It goes to midnight, July 21st. Uh, Boston Tabernacle. Uh, to October 22nd is 188 days. 94 between here and here. 94 between here and here. 
So the, this chiasm in this history, if you can remember back to the presentations I was doing, this is the second chiasm in this history um, that we put in the record now. The, one, the other one goes 63-63. And the one that, that goes 63-63 occurs other places. But I want to point out that the first presentation that we did when we come back into this Omega apostasy was on September 7th. And 63 days later, it takes you to November 9th. So now, you, you should be up here. You shouldn't, you shouldn't have to come up every time. If you want to add something to that, or you want to add something from the floor to that, th here's the opportunity to do so. Uh, I would just like to add, there's a, a 220 also. Symbolically, from the first day of the first month till the 20th day of the ninth month, if you look uh, at dates as symbols, you can write first day, first month as uh, 11. If you drop the D and the M, and you can write this as uh, 209. And 11 plus 209, of course, is 220, the symbol of uh, restoration. That's it? Uh, yeah. Just okay. another example of uh, how the Lord uses uh, symbols, dates as symbols. Okay, so he's doing two things here. He's, he's showing his chiasms that the Lord uses it and that dates are symbols. Uh, and, and now on this board, we dealt with this in, in my presentations, but I didn't have all this all these dates up here, I said purposely I was leaving them out so we could get, just get familiar with the line. And uh, this here, wh what, what does this represent? The line of Ezekiel. Okay, so that, that, this is this line without the clutter on it. Yeah, it's just a sec underneath it. Okay. Yeah. Um, and then this here is? The line of Josiah Lich. Lich's line. Yes. Okay, this is the one that I wanted to make sure we put in place. From July 27th, Julian. Right. Right? Correct. Here. So it, says, it says the G from the Gregorian. Julian, Julian. Okay, so Gregorian. this is July 27th, Gregorian. Yep. <coughs> you go 180 years into the future. Right. And it takes you to... You don't have it up here. Yeah. It takes you to... To July 18th, 2020. To July 18th, 2020. Okay, so the, re the reason that you can, the reason that he's doing that up here is he's taking Ezekiel's line about the prophecy of Josiah and he's combining it with Josiah Litch's understanding of Revelation 9. And from this point onward takes you to July 18th, 2020. And let me do one thing over here. Are these dead? Is that why you have yeah, the... Yeah, they are. Okay. If you leave the cap off, they will dry yeah. up. Okay. Um, over here now, if you can... Did you want to say something? Yes. Yeah. In the Gregorian calendar, the 180 years would be... Take us to the 27th of July, uh, 2020. But in the biblical calendar, it's the 26th day of the fourth month. It connects to that, so that's why there's a difference between July 27 and July 18. Is because we're using the, the biblical calendar. Okay, but it's the biblical calendar from here yes. to the end of the 180 years. So it's 180 biblical years. Takes you to July 27th. Uh, no, the 127th, July 27th would be 180 uh, Gregorian years, but 180 biblical years will bring you to July 18. Okay, so, but what what I'm seeing here though is that if you do Gregorian down here, you're going to end up at July 27th. Is that what you're saying? So it's there's still a, a profound recognition here because you're starting in July 27th here. Um, you end up with both of these dates at the same point in time. Um, in the July 27th in the French Revolutionary calendar is the 
ninth day of the eleventh month. Nine eleven. Yeah. Eleven or, or, eleven nine or November nine. November nine. <laughs> okay, ninth day of the eleventh month, November nine. <laughs> The reason that, that I think that we need to, to c- click on this one, and then I'll turn it over to him, is that by putting together Ezekiel 4 and Revelation 9, line upon line, and using the calendars as your justification for looking at some of these concepts, 180 years takes you to July 18th, 2020. But if you go back three and a half years from there to here, three and a half years is going to take you to January 20th, 2017. Okay, and on January 20th, 2017, Trump is inaugurated. And he's going to begin to be the president of the United States. You're looking at me with... Okay, so, so now you've got a year here to 2018. Probably not the right... This is 2018, 20, January 2020, 2019, and then 2020. And I'm saying all of these are the inauguration day. So this is the first year of Trump... Second year of Trump, third year of Trump, and here on July 20th, January 20th, 2020, it would be the inauguration day. It's 180 days from here to here to July 18th, 2020. So this would tell us that from Trump's inauguration to July 18th is how many years? Three and a half. Three and a half. 1,260 days. But more than that, this this would begin Trump's fourth year. And I really don't know how to explain ascension years in biblical terms, but I think Brother Stephen can help us on this. But in the book of Esther, in the the beginning of the book of Esther, it says it it is Xerxes, Ahasuerus' third year. But if you understand that he had an ascension year, then it's actually in his fourth year. And this movement has already put in the record that Ahasuerus... Xerxes typifies Trump. So in Trump's fourth year, which is Xerxes' fourth year, within that year, not at the end of it, within it, in the book of Esther, Xerxes is going to call, call a feast for 180 days. And he's going to bring together all the rulers of his kingdom to go to war. Um, and is the is the assumption made there. It doesn't actually say that in the book of Esther, but that's the assumption because he is getting ready to go to war in history. Um, and he's gathering all the leadership of the, of the world. So when we are saying that back here in this history, in our history here, the Battle of Rafia is Russia defeating the United States and that two, July 18, 2020 is the United States retaliating against Russia and removing Russia from history then we also have Xerxes as a type of Trump to consider. And it's from this point here forward, which is 180 days, which corresponds to this 180 years. Takes you to the same place, day for a year. The third witness is the feast of Ahasuerus in the book of Esther. You want to add to that and tell us about the ascension year? I got a question on that in the chat. And... I'm not too clear on that. Okay, if, um, for instance, if um, if we were considering, um, well, say the the kings then would have maybe the spring to spring would be the, the start of the year, and um, the end of the so 
if um, if say if Darius began his twentieth year and um, died um, in the in the summer, okay, so Xerxes would then become the king, but that from you wouldn't count from the summer. He would have to fulfil the rest of that year. That would be his ascension year. And it's only when you come to the spring, the following year, that that would be the beginning of uh, Xerxes' uh, first year. So, so the only way ascension year wouldn't be there is if the king died on the very first day of spring. Yes. Okay. Mm-hmm. So he he's got you. Mm-hmm. It's just understood there's an ascension year. Yes. Typically. Okay. Mm-hmm. You want to add to that? I'm just having a thought about. First Kings, chapter eighteen, were about Carmel, and um, you have 120 years there of a famine, and then there's like a, a fire coming down. So we can maybe place like a fire coming from heaven. It's and not 120. It's well, how's 1260. Well, 1260. Yes. And then a fire comes down. Yes. So just an idea it could be applied. So, so you're saying if you take that 1260 and you plug the story of Mount Carmel into it, that when you get to July 18th, 2020, you might see fire coming down out of heaven, and you're inferring a nuclear fire. But you have something to add to that, my brother? Not to uh, okay. So, that. So tell us about this. So yeah. Um we are talking about um, July 18, of course, and this line, July 18, shows up for the first time at the destruction of the temple. Uh, July 18 is the 10th day of the fifth month, uh, rabbinical uh, Julian. So that's the first time July 18 shows up. Uh, important to see this symbol, of course, we, we have talked about this. Uh, Jeroboam offering on the altar on the 15th day of the 8th month. It is mentioned two times in 1 uh, Kings 12, I think. Mm-hmm. 32, 33. So important to remember. What, what is the 15th day of the 8th month. Okay. Right. The last two verses of 1 Kings chapter 12 are going to reference the last two verses of 1 Kings chapter 12 are going to reference the 15th day of the 8th month. It's doubled there. The symbol of the midnight cry. Um, so we already saw it's 390 years from this moment to the destruction, uh, the siege of Jerusalem. And it took another 18 months for the destruction of the temple. So you have a total of 300, 391.5 uh, years till the destruction of the temple. Which we, of course, also see in the line of Lich, the 391.5. So, July 18th, one of its characteristics is the destruction of Jerusalem. Yes, in, in this line, yeah. Correct. But you have two witnesses here and AD 70. Amen, yeah. So, when we see July 18th, it probably has a characteristic of the destruction of the temple or of Jerusalem, which we typically identify as Sunday law. Um, yeah, I don't know. How, I, I don't do not know how July 18 is connected with uh, AD 70. It's the same day, biblical year that Jerusalem was destroyed. On the, the same f- day, ten day of the fifth month. Yep. Yeah. But I don't know. If, do you know, Stephen, if July 18 is connected with the temple destruction in AD 70? No, I'm only saying it's connected because it's the tenth day of the fifth month. Okay, in that way, yeah, yeah, of course, sure, yeah, absolutely. That's correct to do, right? Once you have it, the two are working together, then you can read it into it. Right. Which means if July 18, 2020 carries the 10th day of the fifth month with it, that we're, if we're saying that's the midnight cry, we have yeah. taught for years that the midnight cry is where Jerusalem is chosen again based upon David ruling for seven and a half or seven years in Hebron from 9-11 to the midnight cry. 
And at the midnight cry, Jerusalem is chosen again, and he rules Jerusalem for 33 years. Right. And we've taught that Jerusalem is both destroyed and lifted up at the midnight cry as a, the purification takes place. So that's the right biblical number to put there. Right. And another thing um, which is important to see is the 391.5 pre preceded by a 120, which we will see this pattern uh, more often in this study. It's important to uh, remember also. And on the line of Lich, uh, we've talked about it also. We see a 391.5. Uh, I don't know if I. We see 291.5 from 1449 till August 11, 1840. And there's a 291 uh, year preceded by a 126. Uh, yes. What is the 120 preceding the 390 on your middle line? What's the... What is there? Up above. Up above. It, right it's one? the three kings. Saul reigned 40 years. Yes. David reigned 40 years. Who did I leave out? Solomon reigned 40 years. Yeah. And just to clarify, 391.5, you say there it's actually 391 point. Well, it's, it's actually half point five of a month rather yeah. than point five of a year. Yes. So the, the point five over a year is uh, six months. Or 100, 180 days. The point five over a year is 15 days, half a month. So we talk about half a year. The point five, we talk about 15 days, half a month. But we, we both call them 391.5, 391.5. And in our history, it's it's a half a what is it? Half a day. Half a day. Yeah. Half a day. Half, Twelve hours. Yeah, so, interesting is uh, that July 27 that we see five times on the board here. Here, 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 and here. Uh, m matches up with the 26th day of the fourth month, th which is in all cases uh, the biblical date. Which is very... Uh, 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 Rare, is that the word? Rare? Rare, almost <laughs> impossible. <laughs> almost impossible for it to line up five times in a row uh, with July 27. Uh, so the chances of one occurrence is perhaps one in 15. So if you calculate the odds, you should add or multiply 15 times 15 times 15 times 15 times 15. You get a number like 760,000. So the chances is 1 in 760,000 that you see this on the board. July 27 with the 26th day of the fourth month. Uh, and if you also uh, incorporate the, the event, that there is a relative event associated with it, the odds become even bigger in the, in the millions and billions. It's uh, difficult to calculate, of course. So oh, that's, uh, that's one thing. <coughs> yes. But that's... Uh, Not July 27th, but... Yeah. But that's because you add 180 days to the years to the 26th day of the fourth month, so you, you will always end up on the 26th day of the fourth month. So that's more or less uh, uh, logical. But int very interesting to see is also uh, you see this combination of 26th day of the fourth month and July 27, and we always wondered why this combination is, is relevant. So, like I shown on, on that board. We wrote the date as a number, first day, first month as 11, and 
26th day of the ninth, 20th, 20th day of the ninth month as 209. So uh, if I do the same year, I will write, or we can write 26th day of the fourth month as the number 264. So I'll write it down here. This is my four. <laughs> So this is better. And you can write July 27. July is, of course, the seventh month, right? Yep. So we can write July 27 as the 27th day uh, 277. 277, of course. The 27th day of the seventh month. So we have two numbers here. If we, if we add them, we get the number Five, four, one. <coughs> I hope that is clear for everyone. Mm -hmm. Get the number five, four, one. Do you know what he's doing out there? Okay. So then we discover that the the period from where we see this first occurrence of July 27 in combination with the 26th day of the fourth month till the last combination of July 27 and the 26th day of the fourth month is 1840 minus 1299, right? Uh, so we have the year 1840 and 1299. If you subtract them, uh, which number do you get? 541. We get 541. So there you see that these numbers uh, are exactly the same, showing that this can in no way be an accident. It is, has to be by design. So we have to do something with this information. It shows us that we are... Uh, we have license to do this and use these numbers as symbols, these dates as symbols, of course, and that is how we will uh, proceed this study. And even uh, yeah, better, I think, so we just added these numbers, 264 and 277, but if you multiply them, you, see, you also see... Uh, a significant, significant number showing up. So we will add 264 times 277. And you get the number... Sorry? You said that. You oh, multiply. yeah, you, you multiply them. Yeah, we did uh, addition. You get the number 73128. So that in itself doesn't say anything, not much. But if we use the number that uh, we see in both of these lines, that uh, which number is that? That's 391. 391, of course. So if we divide this number by 391, that these two lines have in common, is 391. And I will put the result here. If you de divide it, what's, what is it, the defining symbol for? A line with a dot on top and bottom. Uh, like, <laughs> like this. Yep. If you, you divide these two numbers, you get the number 187, which of course is the symbol for July 18. 18th day of the seventh month. Yeah. 18th day of the seventh month. Uh, well, just July 18th. Is that precisely? Uh, point zero. And then some decimals afterwards. Okay. So. Although, also, if you add the 391, 
the first mention of the 391 in Lich's line of Revelation 9 yeah. with the 150, yeah. you get 541. Yeah, that's correct. Yeah, that's exactly. Where does the 277 come from? This is July 27, right? July is it? July is the seventh month He's of the year. He's putting the day in front of the month. Yeah. When you first see this kind of stuff, I, I don't know about everyone else, I'm tempted to, to think, well, maybe someone that knows math can do that with any random numbers and they can just create this kind of... Um, Structure, but it isn't so. No. When you when you think it through, this has to be by design. Yeah. And to, to assign that to as a satanic design requires that you believe that Satan was in control of human history, of biblical events. Yeah. Yeah. It, it's yeah. it's too profound not to be divine. Yeah, this is exactly why he is called Pomoni. Amen. Or if you say it was an accident, then you become an evolutionist. Yeah. yeah. Exactly. What else? Uh, what else? Um, yeah, I think that's pretty much it. I'll, I'll add one thing to it that we put in the record earlier on the bottom line where he has July 27th, 1299 and he, he being from Holland his nines are what we call G's here so if you see <laughs> G's up there, they're nines but if you go from July 27th, 1299 on the Julian to July 27th, 1789 on the Gregorian you have 490 years and you have a connection of July 27th somehow, some way with the establishment of the State Department in the United States as well. Yeah. All right. <clears throat> yeah. Okay. Next page. I think page 14. Okay, you want, you're going to want a board to deal with this, right? Uh, no, we can just read it. It's just the meaning of the numbers. We mentioned this in, in the first one in my presentation, and I got it. I got the information from right here. Um, but we're arguing that the 391 is a symbol of Islam. So this first reference, the number 391, seems to have some connection with the Islamic calendar. The Islamic calendar is based upon the lunar cycle, and it's not adjusted for seasons. The Islamic calendar and the solar year align every 32.583 years or 33.583 Islamic years. If we want to have the Gregorian and the Islamic calendar align in round years, we would need exactly 391 years for that to happen. You follow what he's saying there? That... Two different calendars, if they start at the same point in time, they're going to get off of calibration in order for them to come around into a cycle where they align together, again together. These two calendars takes 391 years. Along with Revelation 9's 391, we're understanding 391 is a symbol of Islam. Yes. I will draw the line... Uh Pardon me? It is amazing. Yes, it's amazing. Yeah. It's amazing that the new movement 
thought this was the kind of light they could throw under the bus. Every time I think of this, I think of that passage in the Spirit of Prophecy in my, in my life today. I forget. Anyway, when we study the books of Daniel Revelation, it will be seen that the relationship between God and his, and his people is close and decided. decided. They had a different agenda. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. So, God is with yeah. us every step of the way mm -hmm. and is involved in human affairs, even to the minutest detail. <clears throat> the 391 years, uh, it equates to 12 cycles of 11,900 days. Okay. So, sorry, uh, that's uh, yeah, you heard. The, you're saying the mm -hmm. Islamic calendar has 12 cycles of 11,900 days. Yes, it's. Um, I'm, I'm saying that uh, the 391 years, within them, there's 12 cycles of 11,900 days. So you've got eleven nine there as well. If you're going to, oh, cancel. okay. Yeah. Did you get that? In in the three hundred and ninety one years, if you have three hundred and ninety one years on the Islamic calendar, and you divide it by twelve, if there's twelve cycles, okay, that it, that the what the number you come up with, with is eleven thousand nine hundred days, twelve times in a 391 year period on the Islamic calendars. But you can drop this, the zeros. So 11,900 is 11,9, it's November 9th. Unless you want to flip it over and it's 9-11. Yeah. I got it written down for both of you. Uh, So this is 264. This is the 2604, yeah. Uh, we know the extended or the mirror 2520. This should be familiar uh, for us. To us. Do we know this line? The 2520? Yep, we know it, but usually no one looks at it. It's complete distance, like you're doing. Yeah. Um, well, this is the moment where Josiah gives the prophecy to King Ahaz. Isaiah. Isaiah, to King Ahaz. In Josiah chapter 7, uh, verse 9. Should we read it, or do we believe it? We believe it, but we can read it. I'll read it. Into the record. Isaiah 7, verse, verse 9. 9. This is what uh, the pioneers use for their point of reference for the 2520, especially Josiah Litch. Yeah. And the head of Ephraim is Samaria, and the head of Samaria is Remaliah's son. If you will not believe, surely thou shalt be established. It's verse 8. Verse 8 is what you want. And 9. And nine. <coughs> For the head of Syria is Damascus, and the head of Damascus is Rezin. And within three score and two year, tw three score and five years, shall Ephraim be broken, that it be not a people. And the head of Ephraim is Samaria, and the head of Samaria is Remaliah's son. If you will not believe, surely ye shall not be established. <coughs> you said Josiah Lech. <coughs> I think you mean Hiram Edson. Yes, I mean Hiram Edson. Yeah. So we see here uh, <coughs> uh, the symbol 2604, which could, if you look at it as a symbol, could, uh, or it's the same as the 264, right, that we see here. We see here a symbol uh, 264, do we see that? Where do we get that symbol? Which symbol? This symbol? This, the 26th day of the 4th month. 26th day, day of the 4th month. Mm -hmm. Right? Yeah. 
and you see a 26.4 if we drop this zero, 26 day of the fourth month, uh, which is the same as that symbol over there. So we, we can use it in the, the days uh, as, 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 as numbers and compare them, right? So that's important to, to understand. It's a technique we are using in this, uh, in this study <coughs> over and over again. So if we, if we ask what is the meaning of the 26th day of the fourth month or 264, <coughs> it could refer to this structure, possibly. And also there's not a 264 that we see in the, in the week of Christ, where this is the one on page 15. If you look at the week of Christ, there is uh, these seven years. Starting in 27 AD. Uh, ending in 34 AD, AD. And the crucifixion in 31 AD. We see the cross. Um, th these are two periods of exactly three and a half years, or you could say two, peri two periods of 1260 days, right? Or like it says on the chart, uh, it's not talking about weeks, but but months. We see an 84 year. Mm -hmm. uh, we could also express this week as two periods of 42 months and another 42 year which adds up to a total of 84 months <coughs> right uh, and if we Take the 84 and the, the year of the crucifixion, and if you multiply them, which number do you get? 264. You get, it. again, a two, 264, uh, 2604. I'll write it over here. So we see the same number again. So the 264 could refer to the crucifixion or the... Extended 2520, uh, in a way. So the, I like to think that it's a a number that refers to to Christ uh, as some sort of confirmation, uh, as 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 a, how do you say a signature of his approval, so to say. Uh, so I don't think these, these numbers are just coincidental. They have more meaning to it. So that's what I would like to point out. And on that line over there, the 26th day of the fourth month yeah. repeatedly is July 27th. Yeah, correct. So July 27th would be part of the characteristics of that symbol as well. Yeah. Right? Whatever that represents. Yeah, we see July 27 on the line of Lich, which is all about Islam. So uh, perhaps July 27 is, is just a symbol of Islam. But in, in, in the, the prophecy of Judah in Genesis 49, Judah is put together with the ass, with the donkey. Right. So, and Christ rides into Jerusalem on the ass. You, you, they don't get separated prophetically. Right. Yeah, I agree. So that's all I uh, would like to say about the number 2604 or 264. Any questions? Or? Why are you telling us this? The, the meaning of the number. Yeah, but why? What, why do we need to know this? That there is no coincidences in God's Word. Okay. Right? These numbers have uh, a meaning, and we are supposed to dig for these hidden treasures and use them, apply them to uh, 
yeah, to gain further uh, insights in, in his his will. His, uh, yeah, to gain further insights. So, if July twenty seventh in eighteen forty is the starting point for one hundred eighty years, that takes you to July eighteenth, twenty twenty. Is that right. correct? Right. If July eighteenth, twenty twenty is the end of a period of time that begins on July 27th, they must be pretty much interchangeable terms because Jesus illustrates the end from the beginning. Correct. Correct. And uh, July 18th is the midnight cry when Christ, which Christ illustrated by the triumphal entry riding in on the ass. So really when you start looking at it, the numbers are, are marking history as much as any math is involved once you get the symbols of the numbers down pat yeah and this this number by the way the 84 <coughs> uh, 2604 um, minus 84 of course is 2520 of course uh, like to like to add that. So we see the eighty four year, we see the eighty four in this line, combined with the twenty five twenty. Yeah, that's all for this uh, this line. I think we can go to the next page. It's the line of uh, Samuel Snow. Uh, I need to draw this on the board, I think. Uh, can we erase this? Yep. Keep your line. Sorry? Keep the straight line. All Which line? The straight line. Oh, you mean the... Yeah, yeah, yeah okay. <laughs> yeah. Let me read something just to make sure, and I put it in the record in my presentations. Just let me read something to make sure that everyone's getting my point about the 264 being both Islam and Christ. Um, Genesis 49, when Jacob's giving his blessings, um, in verse 8. Through 12, the blessing on Judah, which at one level can be the glorious land, but it's also talking about Christ. Judah, thou art he whom thy brethren shall praise. Thy hand shall be in the neck of thine enemies. Thy father's children shall bow down before thee. Judah is a lion's whelp. From the prey, my son, thou art gone up. He stooped down. He couched as a lion, as an old lion, who shall rouse him? The scepter shall not depart from Judah, nor a lawgiver from between his feet, until Shiloh come, and unto him shall be the gathering of the people, binding his foal unto the vine, and his ass's colt unto the choice vine. He washed his garments in wine, and his clothes in the blood of grapes. His eyes shall be red with wine, and his teeth white with milk. So you, you can see a prophecy here of Judah that's speaking about Christ, but it's connected to the ass. It's connected to Islam. Uh, there's other things in there too. If you want to remember uh, the prophecy of Josiah in, uh, Jer in 1 Kings 13 with Jeroboam, the disobedient prophet's going to die because he rejects the prophetic message and he dies between the lion and the ass, and the lion and the ass are both in this passage to Judah. Uh, it's rejecting that message, the message of the connection between the lion and the ass. But the lion also can be counterfeited by Babylon. So the lion can represent the message of Daniel 11:40 to 45, the king of the north as well. And that's where 
the actual Josiah, King Josiah, that fulfills the prophecy, dies. He rejects the warning message about the war between the king of the north and the king of the south. And he's taken down by the archers, which is Islam. And that is the message of Daniel 11.44. Tidings out of the east and the north shall trouble him, and he shall go forth with great fury to utterly destroy and make away many. Those tidings are the tidings of the ass and the counterfeit lion, or the ass and the genuine lion, if you want to look at it from Christ's righteousness. But that is our message in this history. So to see the number 264 has a connection to both Christ and the cross and the ass is a, a very strong biblical connection. But it's being made with numbers, calendars, not just a, a straightforward doctrinal presentation. Okay, that's all I have to say. I hope you're done writing. Yeah. <laughs> uh, we would like to look into the line of Samuel Snow. Uh, it's also connected with the line of Ezekiel and the line of Josiah Lich. It will also point us to July 18. We already talked about, or Jeff did, about the letters of Samuel Snow. So we will have uh, another quick look at this. We know that uh, Samuel Snow wrote some, le wrote some letters in um, 1844. This, this is the year 1844. Uh, his first letter was in February 16 when he wrote the first letter was publicized on February 22 and April 3 again in the Sign of the Times magazine. Uh, the second letter was published on May 2nd and the third letter written on July 22nd, 22. And published on June 27, and the fourth letter was published on July 18. Uh, so the one after May, that's June 22 and then June 27th? Yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Uh, like this. That's over. So we would like to look at the, the patterns that we, that we see here. Most of these uh, waymarks have some sort of biblical event connected with it. Like we see here, May 2nd, when he published his second letter in the Midnight Cry magazine. So all these, all these letters are uh, published in, in the Midnight Cry magazine except for, for this one, which was in the Sign of the Times magazine. But May 2nd, uh, when Samuel Snow was writing about the, the true date of the crucifixion, was published on May 2nd, which happened to be the 14th day of the first month, or the Passover day. The date of the crucifixion. The date of the crucifixion, when Christ was crucified in 31 AD. The, sorry? May 2nd. Yes. Yes. <coughs> no, the, the true date was... In AD 31 was 27th of April, but it's about the 14th day of the first month, because the Jewish calendar and the our calendar they do not uh, parallel each other. You, you know what? It's uh, the 14th day of the first month can be will be another date the next year and the next year, and the next year, and the next year. So they line up, line up about each, <coughs> about once every 90 years, something like that. Yeah. But in this year, 1844, it was May 2nd that it was the true Passover. But we see significant uh, biblical events on these way marks, most of them. For example, June 22nd was the sixth day of the third month, biblical. 
which is Pentecost, of course. So these are biblical dates. Biblical on the bottom uh, on the bottom of the line, and above the line is the Gregorial uh, dates. Gregorial. So we will look at uh, the patterns that we discover here. This is, by the way, April three is the what we call the false Passover. Because this is the Passover that the the the, the Jews uh, the Jews would would keep. That use the rabbinic calendar, which is not correct. We have to use the to come to the correct date. We have to use the biblical calendar, which has been developed by Theodor Turner. It's interesting when you start studying these letters. There's some nuances beyond the patterns he's going to show, but. You see, he's, he's talking about the fal false Passover, the wrong identification of the Passover that's based upon the rabbinical calendar. And then you have the first disappointment that follows on April 19th, and then you have the true Passover. So right. it's still telling the story that Samuel Snow had to be correct on his calendars. And if you held to the old wineskin of understanding that you were going to be passed by on April 19th. The door was closing on you, so you can even read that into that. Right. Um, and if you look at February 22nd, it was the third day of the 12th month, which was the temple dedication that we read about in Ezra chapter 6. Temple dedication. So most of them have a, a biblical event connected with it, but some of them uh, do not. And the question is, what are we supposed to do with, with those events that do not have a biblical event connected with it? And Theodore Turner, he came up with the idea that, uh, like February 16, it has no significant event connected with it, so he just doubled it. You doubled February 16. So if you write February 16 as we are allowed to do as a symbol, we write it as the 16th day of the second month, right? Yeah. 16 day, second month. Why did he double it? Uh, we just had this, uh, how do you say? Idea. Idea. Yeah, but it's based upon the premise that there's a doubling associated with the midnight cry, and this is the midnight cry message. So he randomly is going to double this number. Okay. Right. How, how are you doubling February 16th? He's going to show you. I interrupted him before he okay. finished. So you can add 16 days and 2 months to this date. Okay. And if you do that, you arrive at... Well, like this. Uh, you arrive at May 2nd. So this is uh, 16 days and 2 months. And you arrive at May 2nd. Mm -hmm. Then he thought, I will do the same again. I'll double it again, see where I will uh, end up. So he doubled it again, and he arrived at July 18. So again, he added 16 days and two months. So this shows it was a, a valid to do, to do this. Valid. Valid, right. And yeah, 16 days and 2 months, you can write it like 77 days also. That's 162 days from February 16th, 
to no. April 19th. No. 16 it's days? A month, month is 30, so two months is 60, plus 16 is 76. 70. Says here 77. 77. 77. Yeah. Okay. 31 days. Oh, he's counting the real months. Okay, not biblical months. Yep. Or I mean the biblical months. Okay. Or with inclusive reckoning, you can also say that, right? Yeah, but you don't need to if it's the months. No. Yeah. So this is an uh, yeah, interesting uh, yeah, thing to, 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 to see. What does it do for us? Shows that this whole history was designed by God. Yeah. <coughs> and governed by the other lines that contribute to him. So this was the, the first fulfillment of the midnight cry and the shows that uh, we're learning about it, that we're going to be fulfilling that in our history as well. So it gives us information and um, yeah, details as to how we can look at that history and apply it to our history. Right. Yeah, if we believe that Millerite history is repeated to the very letter, perhaps the most significant part of Millerite history is the history of the Midnight Cry, the work of Samuel Snow. So there's a lot of details in there that we would want to know if we believe it gets repeated to the very letter. I don't know if this makes any sense. You got 162 then, right? If you take out 16 the day days, the month, second you month. got 162. That's the number, yeah. Divided by 2 is 81. I don't know if that means anything. 81's midnight. Interesting. So, then we have this uh, waymark also covered. It seems to have a purpose. And we have this date uh, left open, June 27th. And Theodore, he thought, uh, I'll do the same thing, sort of, with June 27th. I also uh, will apply a, a, a doubling, but in, in somewhat... Uh, in another way, because June 27, uh, biblical, the biblical date is, as you can see in the document, is the 11th day of the third month. The 11th day of the third month. And he decided to double this date uh, also. And if you double this date, you have the 11th day of the third month, And the eleventh day of the third month, if you add them up, you get sorry, uh, you get the twenty-second day of the sixth month. Can you see that? Uh, three plus three is six, and eleven plus eleven is twenty-two. So you get June twenty-six. So yeah, like Jeff already uh, says, you get June or the 26th, 22nd day of the sixth month, which is June 22nd, right? So it, it points back to uh, June 22nd. <coughs> this is where the letter was written. Here, the letter was published, his third letter. But it basically refers back to the previous waymark, which doesn't seem relevant at this moment, but it will show to be, prove to be relevant in, uh, later on in our study. That <coughs> these are one and the same waymark symbolically, pointing to Pentecost. And we heard. June 22nd, mentioned by Jeff, when he was talking about the donation and the start of the school, where June 22nd was uh, the date mm -hmm. <coughs> that he received the money and uh, the school was started two years later. So June the 27th is the 11th day of the third month in the biblical calendar. Right. Is that it right? Is. 
Is that what you're saying? June 27th. June 27th? June 27th? Yes. It's the 11th day of the third month. Biblical. In the biblical? Yeah. Okay. And your bub, um, the reason why you're, you just decide to double it? Theodore to, did. Okay. Theodore yeah. decided, okay. And just see, and it refers back to the, the yeah. previous date? Okay. Yeah. Correct. So now we have all dates uh, covered. They all have some kind of uh, significance. Connection, so yeah. The, just to give you advance notice, and you probably read the notes already, but he's going get to get to a point where he's going to say that June 27th day is redundant, not necessary. Right. It's already marked in June 22nd. So that's the reason he's taking the time to show you that June 27th can also be identified as June 22nd. Right. And we now know what chiasms are. Uh, and there was another chiasm discovered in this uh, sequence of letters. And we see the one that has a length of 126 days, starting from February 16 to June 22nd. It it starts from the first way mark, February 16. If we count 126 days, we arrive at June 22nd. One twenty six. One twenty six. That's how many days it is. And exactly in the middle of this chiasm, we come at uh, April nineteen, which of course is also an uh, important way mark on the, in the Millerite uh, history, the first day of the first month. So we see here a 63, and we see here a 63. And if we, from June 22nd, if we add 391.5 days a year, Days. D days, sorry. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you. <coughs> if we look at this structure and we at three hundred ninety one days, we arrive at June uh, July eighteen. Uh, 1845. So again, we see July 18 showing up. If we use uh, our, our pattern, if you use this pattern. Yeah, you also have the 120 there from the February the 22nd. So that would fit with uh, the reigns of David. Solomon and Saul. Could you so you, you have a 120 from February the 22nd? The second way mark. Yes. Yes. Yeah. So there are six days between February 16 and February 22nd. Right. So, so you have a 120 and then a 391.5. Yeah. The very I, I will draw this also. Mm. So you see a... Like Stephen said, you see a 6 and a 120, right? And this is a an, uh, an, an, uh, uh, pattern that we will see more often. <coughs> I'm just, um, 
noticing June 27, you can maybe take out as a symbol of 276, the 27th day of the sixth month. No, next one? Yeah. Yep. So as a, a 276, now we recognize 276 as being a number associated with Acts 27, and the number of, in the boat. Right. And then if you go from 742 BC, if you add 2,760 years, it takes you to 2019. Okay. <coughs> okay, that was much too fast. <laughs> Say that again. <coughs> okay, 742 BC, which is the start of the uh, 2520 chiasm. Yeah. If you add 2,760 years. 2,000? 2,760. 276. 0. 2,760. Mm -hmm. 2, 6, 0. 6, 0, yeah. Uh, you come to 2,019. If you add them up. Yes. 2019. Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay. And <coughs> we know that there's uh, 273 as well associated with the, the book, the Nikes, yeah. ch chapter 27. Um, so that would take you to 1989. The two th it would be 2,730 years. Okay. <coughs> and so I'm just trying to maybe tie it in with June 27, because you, you maybe as a symbol there, it says it's 276. All right. So I'm not making any application. I'm just sort of seeing something, maybe something along yeah. the line. Could something could more to it. Yeah. Could click in. All right. Thank you. Let me put that on the board. Yeah. If you're familiar with Acts 27. Right? You have two numbers in Acts 27. We have more than two numbers, but you're dealing with the 276, all the people on the boat, or the 273, all the people less Paul and Claudius and Julia. <coughs> it's, uh, it's, uh, yeah. Paul, Aristarchus, and Luke are the three. Okay. So you, this Russians. is the people on the boat. Mm -hmm. So you're saying this 276 can be understood as June 27th. Well, that's was an idea. I'm just uh, saying. Idea. Mm -hmm. Okay, so June 27th, sixth month, 27th day of the sixth month, mm -hmm. creates 276. Yes. But what you did with that is you started it in 742 B.C., at the beginning of the 2520 time prophecy, and you projected randomly 20, 276, 2,760 years into the future, and it brings you to 2019. But here, if you start at 742 BC, and don't do 2760, but do 2730, it takes you to 1989, which is November 9th, 1989 to November 9th, 2019 is the 30 years of this movement of priests. That's what you're saying? Yes. Okay, but you're not really trying to make any big claims about this. You're just starting to notice that 276 must mean something. <clears throat> well, normally we would associate it with the Levites and the priests coming together. The number 273 we normally associate with the Levites. Due to Numbers chapter 3, <coughs> you, can, you can identify that there, 273 as a figure. Numbers 3 identifies 273 as the Levites. Yes. Okay. So normally we'd, uh, we'd associate maybe 273 with 2019, but we're seeing it 30 years before, so maybe it has like a some Beginning and fore, like a foreshadowing for what's going to be happening in 2019, and maybe you could take the 276 uh, for now and see it as like a foreshadowing <coughs> for the midnight cry, you know. So um, I haven't really processed the understanding of it, but it's just interesting to notice. You got the cap. Okay.
Thanks. So we see these uh, interesting uh, chiasms. You have the 2 times 63 with April 19 in the middle. We have 2 times 77 days with May 2nd Passover in the middle. And there is another chiasm, very interesting chiasm. So I would like to add that to the board. Uh, because we thought, yeah, we have 63 and 77. So on average, that would be? What was the question? We have 63 and 77. Mm -hmm. Two chiasms. Right. So on average. On seven. average, what would that be? 70. 70, right? So we try to look if there was, was a chiasm with, uh, with the number 70. And, and there was. Uh, yes. There is. <laughs> I will uh, draw it. Uh, we have five more minutes, I think. Four minutes. It goes from. Uh, I have to make some space here. It goes from February 16 till April. 26, so I'll this is April 26, I'll put it here, and April is which month of the year? Four. Four. So we have symbolically another 26-4, correct? Which number we saw uh, on, on that this uh, other board and with the extended twenty five twenty and the week of Christ, right? We, we remember that the twenty six four was uh, yes, yes. twenty six hundred and four years. Yeah. Drop the zero, you got two sixty four. So that that was pretty interesting because. Um, July 18, 2020, of course, again, is on the 26th day of the f uh, fourth month, both biblically and rabbinically. Uh, 20, no, let me put it. July 18 is the 26th day of the fourth month. Uh, but biblical, bibi biblically, <laughs> and rabbinical. So that's important to remember. So this way mark points uh, to points us to July 18 in a sense. And if we extend this chiasm, if we finish this chiasm with uh, another 70 days. We arrive at July the 5th, July 5th, and does this have any significance, July 5th? And it seems, it appears that July 18th, 2020 um, is July 5 on the Julian calendar in the year 2020. And 1844. Yeah. I the July 5th on the Julian is July 18th on the Gregorian in 1844. Is that what you're saying? Yeah, July 5th is the, the Julian of July 18 in Great 2020. Right. But I'm just thinking, would it be, uh, be also um, the Julian date in 1844? Or has that been changed? Would it be different? 
or is it just 2020? Fifth of July, eighteen. How can you say that they're the same? They're using two calendars. They're using the yeah. Julian and the Gregorian. Yeah. The same yeah. day on the Julian will be July fifth, and on the Gregorian will be July eighteenth, on the same day. All right. So what's the letter for that? She's this is Gregorian G from Gregorian. Yeah, I know that. Yeah, yeah. But what? Like why would that be significant? Day they're different months. dates. No, uh, July eighteen, twenty twenty. Yeah, I know. On the Gregorian yeah. calendar, yeah, is July five on the Julian calendar. They are the same day. The same. Are there any more July fives? Right there in the Millerite history, that seventy, that chiasm of seventy and seventy ends on July five in eighteen forty four. Therefore, it's pointing forward to July eighteenth, twenty twenty. And the the twenty. So yeah, well, maybe still your thunder here from what you might say later on. But uh, the twenty sixth of April in, uh, is the date when the Chernobyl the disaster happened in nineteen eighty six. <coughs> so you can associate the twenty sixth yeah. day of nineteen eighty six as the twenty sixth of April when the Chernobyl yep. twenty sixth of April He's, he's okay. adding some okay. light on 264. That's nuclear yeah. disaster. Uh -huh. mm -hmm. But we'll get to that in this study. It's being mm -hmm. mentioned also in this study. But we see a yeah, reference to July 18 year. We see July 18 year. We see July 18 year. And we see July 18 year. So over and over again, July 18 shows up, keeps showing up. So. It's pretty remarkable, I should say. Mm -hmm. How is April 26th, July 18th? <coughs> because July 18th, Gregorian, is the 26th day of the fourth month, bibli biblically and rabbinical. It's a symbol. So April is for 26th day. No, is that really It's a symbol. But it's pretty cool that the 26th day of the fourth month is the same both biblical and rabbinical. Yeah. It, I got two witnesses to it there. That does not happen every year also. So it's... Yeah, a very um, important structure that we have to work with and uh, in our study also. And you want to have a closing prayer? All right. Dear Father in Heaven, thank you for being able to do this study and please help us to understand these things that we have uh, discussed. Help us to apply all these uh, dates and numbers and symbols in the right way. Help us to understand that these things uh, cannot be coincidence that they are by design. And help us to to know your will, to discover what is your will and make it clear to us what we have to do with all this knowledge and please pour out uh, the letter rain upon us and that we may, we may have knowledge of the future events. We ask you all these things in Jesus' name. Amen.